Hi, I'm Will and welcome to Venture to Rome. And today we're talking about fridges. You're gonna hear from five different overlanders on the fridges that they use, why they use them, what they like, what they don't like. It's gonna be fantastic, so stay tuned. So this is our Dometic CF35 fridge that has an insulated cover to it that we put on it as well. So um, this is an older model Dometic fridge. What I like about it is the size. It is a great size for fitting into our Jeep because we don't have a lot of cargo room. We are generally weekend overlanders, even though we do go on some extended trips from time to time. And there's plenty of room in here to, to have at least three days worth of food for our family of four. So I love that it's small and yet there's still enough room to keep all the things that we need to go on a great trip. Another thing that I really like about this fridge is that it's got a great compressor that doesn't draw too much power. It's really, really efficient. So I've never had an issue um, uh, running out of power or draining the battery or anything like that with this fridge. And we've used it many, 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 many times. What I don't like about this fridge is that it's old tech. It doesn't have any of the new fancy stuff that like connects to your phone, real-time monitoring, you can turn the temperature up and down remotely. It doesn't have any of that. It's pretty basic in terms of the tech. That hasn't actually bothered me too much, but it would be nice to have the new tech. So that's one thing that I don't like about it. So the other thing that I don't like about this fridge is that the handles are fixed. Now, when you have a Jeep that has as little room as ours, this kind of stuff, this is like, I don't know, three inches it makes a big difference. So what I did is I had to just remove the entire handle on one side so I could put it up flush inside the Jeep. I do not like that. The newer models have handles that flip up and down and I really wish we had that on this model. Taking the handle off isn't that big of a deal but there are times when I'm carting the fridge from the kitchen out into the Jeep where it'd be really nice to have a handle so I didn't have to kind of carry it cattywampus. So that's what I don't like about this. In summary, I, I would do this again for sure. I would buy a used Dometic any day of the week. Um, if I didn't do that, I might look for a less expensive, maybe not super big brand name to start because you can spend a ton of money on these things and I'm not sure you have to. So that's what I think. So now we're gonna hear from Braxton over at Welcome to the Outdoors. Braxton is a whiz when it comes to cinematography and shooting. He's always on the road. He's got some really interesting trips planned and I think you'll really love this channel. So here's Welcome to the Outdoors. Hey guys, my name is Braxton and my channel is called Welcome to the Outdoors where we focus on everything related to living on the road. The fridge that I use is one of these generic Amazon fridges called Stackle. I decided to go with this fridge because my friend Rob from Revere Overland had it laying around and he let me borrow it. I did not know what size fridge I needed so this was a great start to see what size fridge I actually need. What I like about it is that it does everything that you would expect a fridge to do. I have had no issues using it even though I dropped it on its face the first time using it. What I don't like about this fridge is that it's not a dual zone. So when I'm at home I typically make frozen smoothies and it would be great to be able to make some on the road. I like to cook a variety of meals and the size of this fridge limits that. It's a great fridge but for me I'm looking for something a little larger and with dual zones. Again, my name is Braxton and welcome to the outdoors. Next, you're gonna hear from Matt Brody over at Simply Must Go. Matt makes beautiful trip overlanding videos and is a really good guy. I really have loved collaborating with him on this and other projects that we're doing. And so I can't wait for you to check out Simply Must Go. Hey Will, thank you so much for having me on your channel. My name is Matt Brody with Simply Must Go. It's a YouTube channel that's sort of all about answering that call to get out and explore. And today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the fridge that I use when I'm out overlanding and camping. Uh, this is the Set Power RV45S, and I absolutely love it, and I love it for a couple of reasons. One is that it's big, but it's not so big it doesn't fit in the back of the Jeep. So this fits comfortably in the back of the JKU and in the back of the YJ, and it's big enough that I can store enough food for six people. We've got a big family, so I can fit enough food for six people in this and still have room for more. So inside, it's got two compartments. So there's a bigger side and then there's a smaller side. And in the smaller side, I typically use things like eggs and condiments and stuff like that. And in the bigger side, I will put uh, drinks and meats and veggies and all that kind of good stuff. 
So this is actually a dual fridge freezer unit, which means you can set this up to be a refrigerator. So you can set it down to like 34 degrees or something like that. If you want it to be a refrigerator, you can also set it down to zero. If you want to make this a dedicated freezer, it doesn't do both at the same time. So it's kind of one or the other. So using the set power fridge is super simple. All of the controls are located right at the front of the unit. It's got three modes for the battery protection. So there's a high, medium and low. So if you've got this plugged into your uh, 12 volt in your car, then you can make sure that you're not running the battery down so much that you can't start your vehicle. Uh, and then if you're using a dedicated battery pack the way I am, you can set it so that it'll use a lot more of that battery before it turns off the refrigerator. You've also got two compressor modes, a maximum and a minimum. So if you've got this plugged into shore power or AC power, you can set it to max. And if you're running it off of a battery, you can set it to minimum. And that's helpful because you can save some battery life by not running the compressor so hard if you're just on battery. So speaking of power, the set power is actually really good at power consumption. I run a 500 watt battery pack and I get between 36 and 39 hours on that battery on this fridge. And so what that means is for a weekend warrior like me, I can run this the whole weekend, especially if I also you know, plug this into my car's 12 volt on my way to camp or the way back. All right, so another thing I really like about this refrigerator is that all the hardware is metal. So the latches in the front are all metal and also the handles on the side are metal. So it's a really sturdy build, but the whole case is also metal which has the added bonus of being able to put stickers on it because, well, I like stickers. And so this has become my sticker box. And so uh, you can't do that with the other refrigerators that have this sort of hard plastic shell all over like the top is here. It's harder, but with the, with a metal case, you can put stickers anywhere you want. So there are some things that I don't absolutely love about the refrigerator and they're certainly not deal breakers and they're not even really cons as much as they are things to know in advance if you're thinking about getting this refrigerator. The first is that it only opens in this direction. So some other fridges have tops where you can open them up from either or, or you can change the sides. This is locked into being in this position, which is not a big deal for me. It works in my Jeeps the way that I have it set up. So again, not a, not a con, but a thing to know that it, this is the way it's going to open up. Another thing that I don't love about it is where the power cord is placed. The power cord is at the very front of the unit and it's on a 90 degree turn that aims the cord around the front of the unit. I really wish it actually aimed the cord around the back. I don't, I don't really know why it aims it around the front, uh, but it does. And again, it's not a deal breaker, but it's not my favorite way of managing cables in my Jeep. So I'm always folding it over and then back around the back. Uh, I really wish it was aimed out the other direction, but again, that's partly the way my Jeeps are set up. Uh, so anyway, something to think about. All in all, I do really love this refrigerator. It's a great budget option. It runs at just about $419 on Amazon. So when you're comparing that to like the uh, Dometics or the Ice Co's or things like that, this is definitely coming in at a less expensive price point. And I think it's totally worth doing. I don't have any reason to feel like I've got to upgrade or get one of those other name brand refrigerators because uh, this is doing everything I've wanted it to do and it's taken some abuse on the trails and it's held up just fine. All right, well, that's pretty much gonna do it for me. Again, if you guys are interested in checking out my channel, you can head over to youtube.com slash Matt Brody or search for Simply Must Go. All right, now you're gonna hear from Fletch over at All Things Overlanding. Fletch and I have been kind of really great overlanding creator buddies for a while, and he always has an interesting take on gear. He does a lot of DIY stuff, and if you haven't checked out that channel, you should go do it right now, but you're gonna hear from him, so here he is. All right, so today we are talking about sort of what fridges or coolers or whatever cooling option for food storage we all run. Um, I personally have had several fridges. I had an Alpacool, I've had an Iceco, which I also run in another vehicle of mine. And then I have this newer one to me is this New Air uh, Dual Zone 48 quart fridge. Um, this has an LG compressor in it, which I was really excited about, really happy about, that it's not a no name, you know, sort of Chinese uh, compressor because that's a concern when you're buying a fridge and spending some money and these guys are also fall about in the middle of the price range from a price standpoint you know they're it's pretty budget-minded but it's not quite as cheap as an Alpacool but it's also not as much as like a Dometic um, so the reason that I have this specific fridge and size is a couple things one um, I, again I've had really good experiences with the new air stuff I really like it there's a ton of quality built into it you can just hear it from the the way that that clasp attaches like the cheaper ones are really clackety and just feel really cheap 
This thing has a lot of really nice features built into it, like a reversible lid, really high quality clasp. It's a dual zone, so it actually has two sections inside of it that you can you know, make one a fridge and one a freezer. It's also got a bottle opener on it, and it's got a built-in uh, cutting board up here, which is just a nice feature if you're out camping, cooking for a while. Uh, it's got some really nice features built into it. So as far as what I like about it, again, I like it's very light on uh, power consumption, so I like that. It's got the LG compressor, so it has high quality components. Like I said, it's got a bunch of stuff built into it, a bunch of really nice features, so I really like that stuff about it. Um, and again, price-wise, it's a pretty fair price at about 500, 550 bucks. So it's a, it's a relatively budget-minded fridge. As far as what I don't like about it, um, you know, it depends on your application, but some people could argue that the sort of this extendable handle and these wheels could be a bit of a pain. Like if you were gonna strap this down to a drawer system, that would be a little bit of a difficulty for you. I like it, however, because I'm actually gonna run it in the back of the truck and use the wheels to slide it in and out so I don't have to run a slider. Um, so in that case, it makes perfect sense, right? But if you're gonna strap it down, that stuff might get in the way. And that's about the only thing that I don't like about it. Other than that, it works great. So my final thoughts, um, you know, I wanna to touch just briefly on cooler versus fridge. I ran a cooler for years and years. There is nothing wrong with running a cooler. It's a great budget option. However, when I started to go more and more on longer and longer trips farther and farther away, it became apparent to me that the convenience of a fridge was definitely something that I would want. Um, so that's why I ended up you know, trying out several fridges. And again, I've kind of landed on the New Air and the Iceco or the two fridges that I'm running right now. Um, but it's just so nice to be able to like stop into some place and grab something and throw it in there. Like grab warm drinks, pops or beer or whatever and throw it into the fridge and you don't have to worry about it melting all your ice and food potentially going bad because you know your your ice melted so in this case as long as you have power via the vehicle then you have cold food or cold drinks so i love fridges i am pro fridge all the way but again it just depends on your budget and your priorities right if you go on overnighters all the time fridge may not be uh, as important for you so again i hope that was helpful for you i hope that gave you some good info on you know my fridge and why i run it and why i like it check out the description down below for links to my channels and i'd love to have you as a subscriber come hang out last but definitely not least is gary over at g from bc so Gary has a channel that's based out of British Columbia, hence from BC, and he is a master at chill. This guy makes the, the moodiest vibes, the most laid back videos. They are so great, and there's such great terrain up there that he covers. He does trips, he does install vids, he does all kinds of stuff. So I'm really interested to see what Gary comes up with in terms of how he keeps his food cold. Gary here from G from BC. Uh, my channel is all about off-roading, overlanding, and going outdoors in British Columbia, Canada. I actually don't have a fridge, but I do use a cooler, which is a Coleman cooler that I used for the last two years or so. The reason why I don't have a fridge is honestly because of budgetary reasons. Most of my trips were mainly day trips and overnighters. Max was probably like a couple of days, so I won't necessarily need the fridge. So cooler was uh, the best option for me. The good thing is that the guys are sharing four types of fridges, uh, which is what I'm actually kind of looking for. Uh, since this summer, I'm gonna be taking longer trips, some across Canada and actually going down to the States, meeting up with Will. One thing I like about the cooler is I don't have to plug it into any power source. Uh, makes it a lot easier. All I need to do is make sure that before my trip starts, I go out to a grocery store or a marketplace and just fill it up with ice. But in saying that, that's also the negative about if it. I end up going into remote places or my days are a lot longer. It's gonna definitely make it harder for me to keep my uh, food fresh. Uh, throughout the trip and it's going to be hard for me to find ice and you know i'll have to go back to the city or the town to to get that ice final thoughts honestly it all depends on what you guys need it for if you're just doing a day trip or overnight i think a cooler is the best way to do it but if budget is not a problem and you plan to do a lot more overlanding on multiple days i highly suggest for you to uh, get the fridges uh, but also remember you might have to get a power station as well too but yeah that will do it for my time here guys uh, hope you guys consider subscribing to the channel uh, link should be down below in the description and uh, I'll see you guys later so there you have it five takes on overlanding refrigerators from five legit overlanders and awesome YouTube channels 
All of the products, all of the channels, everything is linked in the description. So please click on down there if you want to get more information. And if you liked this kind of collaboration video, get ready because we're doing a bunch of them. This is part of a whole series that we're doing together. And right now on the screen, you can click on the next video that we've done. We're covering all kinds of gear, all kinds of different things. And so I really hope you enjoy these videos and we'll see you next time.